Bora Fund Managers believes in balancing caution and innovation and at the March quarter and had 296 billion rand of assets under management. Joining us now from Cape Town is Eugene Husen, Portfolio Manager at Aura Fund Managers, to chat about investment opportunities both globally and uh, uh, locally. Uh, Eugene, thanks for your time. Let's begin just by looking at the global environment. Whatever you read, what you hear is that uh, the dark clouds are gathering over the global economy because now it's no longer certain that things are going to be as uh, perhaps uh, organized and ordered as people expected in China. We do know about the chaos in Europe. We know that the U.S. is battling to find some kind of balance. But from where you sit, what kind of picture are you looking at? Yeah, I think um, you, you summarized it very well. Um, if we sit back and we look at the global picture, we, we can uh, give the Americans uh, fairly good marks. Uh, things are not going that well, but it's not that bad. Um, they are sort of creating sufficient jobs to survive. Uh, they need to go over that 100,000 hurdle a month. Uh, the Europeans is a total mess, although there are small signs that the, um, the problems are getting patched. I think uh, the European side, what's very important is that we uh, ensure that the liquidity of both sovereign and banks are sorted and that's sort of nearly there and uh, that the solvency issue gets sorted. Now the mm. only way that your solvency issue can get sorted or the first step is to ensure that your borrowing cost is forced down mm. um, and that is not an easy thing to do because you need to uh, utilize someone else's credit to achieve that. In other mm. words from a practical point of view, the Germans will have to guarantee debt, whether they like it or not. And we're slowly moving into a phase where um, that's going to be acceptable norm. Mm. So at least if we can get uh, Spanish and Italian yields down substantially to yeah. reasonable levels, um, the income statement, the sovereign income statement, especially on the cost side, is going to improve and that will filter through. Yeah. And on the banking side, exactly the same. Yeah, it's certainly tough Chinese to lower side, interest rates. Yeah, go on. The Chinese? Okay, on the, on the Chinese side, it's really difficult to read. The Chinese economy doesn't operate the way that our normal free market economies operate. We cut mm. interest rates six to 12 months down the line. You see the stimulus. Chinese economy has been held back definitely by the um, European factor, if we can call it that. But then also on the domestic demand side, they are seeing a little bit of a hiccup. Growth is definitely going to slow. Uh, we saw import, uh, the import numbers um, disappoint somewhat, although it's still uh, not looking too bad. Mm -hmm. um, but they are actioning. We are seeing that they have adjusted rates not too long ago, that they are proactively spending on infrastructure. Yeah. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of time. We are seeing the feed through from the Chinese side on especially our iron ore and um, on the coal prices, right. um, other commodities as well. Um, we're seeing things like uh, the mineral sands business being Im impacted uh, yesterday and late last week yeah. uh, on the Exaro side. So all in all, I don't think we must see this dark cloud bleak picture, but things is not going to be rosy for the next three to five years. So you will be in defensive mode. Yeah, I was going to say my comment on Europe was going to be certainly very difficult to lower interest rates. I think you can ask the Bank of England that question. Uh, they will certainly agree. But uh, can, you, can I get out of you a time frame? in which you think uh, the problems that we're facing are likely to be resolved. I've seen anything ranging from five years, some people are talking as long as 10 years, before we begin to see a general and sustained trend in the, in the, in the upswing of, uh, of global growth. Well, I think um, on the U.S. side, things will get better much quicker. So my time frame there is two to three years. We will see improvement, but we're going to have below trend growth we most probably going to see, see uh, growth in the area of one and a half to two and a half percent. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about the states. Europe, when I say lowering interest rates, we are talking about more two to ten year bond yields. And the only way to get them down is for uh, the uh, 
European partners to assist in, in debt facilitation, which will force the yield curves down. That's very important because if you don't force those curves down, you're not going to solve the problem. Funding is going to be too expensive. European story, anything between five and ten years. The, uh, the critical issue on the European side is will it correct itself, uh, or will it pull, draw down even more over the next year or two? Uh, and I think that's the critical story. I don't buy into that. I think we're going to see a very flat Europe for two to three years and then slow improvements. China, I think it's going to be much quicker. Eugene, just coming back to the US and uh, even though below trend but slightly rosier prospects, do you, how do you anticipate the US will uh, negotiate the fiscal cliff that is approaching in 2013? Yeah, we, it's politics. Eh? We're going into a presidential election. We, we're experiencing a very similar story in our local politics. There's a lot of emotion, a lot of stories coming through. Eventually, they will sort it right at the last minute. There's going to be infighting. Um, so I don't think the tax story is going to be fully rosy. I think there's going to be sacrifices on both ends, but I think it will get sorted. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to buy into a, uh, a doom and gloom story in the States. They're not that stupid, but they'll play their politics right up to the last minute. Uh, Eugene, with that macro backdrop, uh, how do you go about deciding on asset allocation in this environment? You know, it's a nightmare, isn't it? Um, I think there are two plays um, from a domestic point of view, from a South African investor. There are two plays that you need to look at very carefully and balance them out very carefully. On the one side, you need to position your portfolio um, uh, slightly defensive. So we will look for assets that generate cash. So equity-wise, we will pay up a little bit for um, defensive-like stocks. So the AVIs and Tiger brands of the world that pay highish dividend yields and got reasonably predictable earnings, we, was, we are still willing to pay up a little bit on PE side. Uh, we will look at the Sassels and BTIs to help us on currency hedging, but also very cash generative uh, assets. And then you've got to start looking at your opportunities, the Exaros. I mean, Exaro has been slammed on the back of, of uh, especially Tronox. And uh, I personally think it's, uh, it's overdone, except if you really expect a doom and gloom story to come out of China, which I don't. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe linked to that, uh, you, you could look at something like Kumba as well. Yeah. The diversifieds are not expensive. So you've got to play it, you've got to play the cycle. We're seeing a lot of volatility that you've got to utilize. Yeah, Eugene, I haven't heard you mention Sassel. How can you not talk about Sassel in this environment for two reasons? One, where the oil price is, surely it can only go up, and also where the rand is, with all the, uh, the, 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 picture, the, the pictures that you've painted, surely you must get yeah, into I, a rand age I, like Sassel. I completely, I completely agree with you on Sassel. Um, I would put Sassel in the same um, box as, as BTI. So um, we'll use it as a currency edge. Sassel is extremely sensitive to rand movements, so you've got to be very careful where you enter and exit Sassel. And then on the uh, oil side, I think if we see any more weakness in to the oil price, I'll buy Sassel into it. I agree with that.